Good morning and welcome to St. Dunstan's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, April 5th, 2020. It is Palm Sunday and the beginning of the holiest week for Christians throughout the world. My name is Patty Alexander and I am Rector of St. Dunstan's and I am privileged to be able to lead us in worship this morning. I I am purely grateful to our bishop, the Right Reverend Marianne Buddy, who in consultation with Governor Hogan and Mayor Bowser has given permission for clergy to come to our houses of worship to lead services today. So this is a particular blessing for me. I am really cognizant that I am privileged to be here and I am the only one who is able to be here, and this is a gift that I do not take for granted. But it felt very important to me that you all see your worship space, or at least your beautiful window, on this Palm Sunday morning. Our service today will include the Liturgy of the Palms, as well as a modified service of morning prayer, according to the New Zealand prayer book. If you are accessing this video on Facebook, you should see a link there for the order of service. And I encourage you to click on it so that you can follow along and participate actively in our worship as actively as the distance of technology allows. As well, I have to say that it was my hope that I would be able to distribute palms to you this morning. And as recently as a week ago, I expected that I would be able to set up a table in our parking lot and distribute palms to you as you came up in your cars. That is obviously not wise now. We know much more this week than we did last. And so, we enter into this service in a different way than we usually do. If you have access to a branch or a sprig of some kind, I encourage you to raise it for blessing at the appropriate moment. You'll see it in your order of service. I will lift palms and bless palms on behalf of all of us. Our service begins on page one with the Liturgy of the Palms. I will read both the officiant and the people parts, and I encourage you at home to respond with those parts written in bold. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. We continue now with the blessing of the branches, palm or otherwise. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. And if you have a branch at home, I invite you now to raise it for blessing. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We continue with the service of morning prayer. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. Today, if you would hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words of scripture. As God who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Spirit of God, Search our hearts. Let us confess our sins to God. I invite you to say with me, God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against others. We have sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name and tell of your salvation from day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations, your praise to the ends of the earth. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16, and we will use the translation by the Episcopal Order of St. Helena. I invite you to join me at home in reciting the psalm responsively by whole verse. Again, I will read both parts, and I encourage you to respond with those words printed in bold. Have mercy on me, O God for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. 
for my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like the dead out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O God. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Here ends the lesson. Let us recite Canticle 9, which is Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 11, responsively by whole verse. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth 
and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the lesson. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. To a suffering people, even the slightest hint, the tiniest glimmer of hope can cause chaos. People craving good news can be agitated easily by word that relief is in sight. You may have seen an iconic image in the media six days ago of the USNS Comfort, a Navy hospital ship entering New York Harbor to begin its latest mission to care for COVID-19 patients in a city disproportionately impacted by the virus. The photo in question, which I would share with you if I knew how to share my screen on Facebook Live, shows the comfort passing in front of the Statue of Liberty. I imagine you've seen it. And even now, the thought of that image brings tears to my eyes. There was no mistaking the symbolism behind it. Help is on the way. It's one of those photographs like the steel cross at Ground Zero that will be seared into our memories for years to come. New Yorkers were so excited by the Comfort's arrival that they threw concerns about physical distancy to the wind as they thronged Manhattan's west side to watch the ship dock. In a climate of fear and desperation, they streamed out of their isolation to see the ship with their own eyes. Eyes that in many cases peered over the tops of surgical masks and makeshift personal protective equipment. The New York Times quoted Rear Admiral John Muston as saying that the vessel represented all that was good and generous about the American people. Clearly, to the city of New York, the comfort was more than just a ship. It became a beacon of promise and possibility. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Fast forward just a few days, and the mood in New York had shifted considerably. On Thursday, a headline in the Times announced the 1,000-bed comfort was supposed to aid New York. It has 20 patients. The article went on to quote a hospital official as saying, it is a joke. Well, I certainly don't know what happened and wouldn't venture a speculation, I do know that expectations for a quick and immediate solution had been dashed. Disappointment set in. How quickly the tide of public opinion turned. Such is human nature. Hosanna in the highest. It strikes me that as we enter into the holiest week for Christians around the world, we may have the ability to appreciate the significance of Jesus's triumphal entry in Jerusalem in a deeper and realer way than we ever have before. On this day known as Palm Sunday, we're invited to stand amongst the crowds lining the dusty road down from the Mount of Olives. The people of Judea are expecting a Messiah, one who will offer them hope and comfort in a time of suffering. They clamor to catch a glimpse of this Jesus of Nazareth whose reputation precedes him. Help is on the way, the crowds cheer. Now, if we were all here together at St. Dunstan's this morning, we would have gathered in the upper parking lot and processed down to the church, waving our palms and shouting with the people of Judea, Hosanna in the highest heaven. But we're not. 
So we have to use our imaginations to see and hear and feel the scene. Jerusalem is electrified with excitement, so much so that as Matthew describes the scene, the whole city is in turmoil. People have worked themselves up into a frenzy, so intense is their desire for relief. But spoiler alert, in just a few days' time, the mood in Jerusalem will have shifted considerably. This Jesus will not behave according to people's expectations. He will not overturn the occupying power and send Herod and Pilate packing back to Rome. He will not lord his power over anyone. On the contrary, he will get down on his knees to watch, wash the feet of his friend. He will stand by and do nothing as another of his friends, one who will break bread at the same table with him, betrays him. He will surrender himself to religious and civil authorities and carry his own cross to his place of execution, while shouts of crucify him ring in his ears. How quickly the tide of public opinion will turn. Such is human nature. But the signs were there on Palm Sunday for anyone with eyes to see. This Jesus entered Jerusalem not on the back of a noble steed, but on a humble donkey. That surely was a clue, a clue that people missed because they were in turmoil, as we heard in the translation of today's gospel passage. It's worth noting that the Greek word that Matthew uses here literally means to shake, to tremble, to quake with fear. To a suffering people, even the slightest hint, the tiniest glimmer of hope can cause chaos. So focused were they, understandably, on their very real here and now needs that they were not able to see or understand what Jesus was up to in their midst. They couldn't. They wanted an immediate solution to their pain. Of course they did. But Jesus was doing so much more than they could possibly ask or imagine. He entered the holy city of Jerusalem, the city of his death, to inaugurate an entirely new way of life, the reign of God on earth. But the people were not able to see the hope and the promise moving in their midst right before their eyes. They could not, in that moment, see the big picture. They did not understand that the story was far from over. It's also worth noting that Matthew will use this Greek word, which gets translated as turmoil, again in just a few days' time. Matthew tells us that at the very moment of Jesus' death, as he breathes his last, the curtain of the temple is torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shakes. There's that word. The earth shakes and the rocks are split. As Jesus gives up his spirit, all of creation trembles, signaling that God is at work in the world, even in the midst of death. As we enter today into this most sacred of weeks, we are a people in turmoil. We may find ourselves so overcome with despair that we cannot see what Jesus is up to. Of course we can't. I can't. And so the invitation of this Holy Week feels perhaps more urgent than it has ever felt before. It's an invitation to walk with Jesus through these coming days allowing ourselves to experience our own disappointment and fear. We are suffering people, and Jesus is among us, 
doing something that we cannot even ask or imagine. We may not experience immediate relief in the here and now. Our hearts may break in the coming days. But we are reminded this week that God is at work in the world and that this is not the end of the story. Walk with Jesus through this holy week. Allow yourself to feel your feelings authentically and ask him what he might be doing in the midst of all the pain and suffering and fear and disappointment that surrounds our lives. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue now with the prayers. My friends, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together fervently in the words that Jesus taught as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray for our own needs and for those of others. Loving God, this morning we lift our hearts to you, beseeching you to hear our prayers. Hear our petitions, our intercessions, and our thanksgivings. We ask you to receive them all, bless them, and sanctify them. Strengthen us through prayer to be faithful servants and disciples, followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. This morning, we remember those who have been commended to our parish prayer list. Nancy Bancroft, Roy Barber, Phil Carroll, Nina DeRoos, Kenny Farnsworth, Warren Green, Leah Leonard, Julie Petersmeyer, Pam Plaisance, Donald Powell, Matt Ryan, Kurt Shively, Lena Verville, and Don Wasserman. We pray for all those impacted by the coronavirus, remembering especially those who are infected, those who may be ignorant of their exposure and infection, those who struggle to breathe, those who are living in fear. We pray for all medical professionals and first responders. We ask for protection for all those in the service industry. We pray for those who live with anxiety or depression or other mental illness. We pray for students and their teachers 
who are learning and teaching in a different way now. We pray for the church throughout the world who, while not able to gather together, still raises our hearts and souls and minds together in prayer on this Palm Sunday. And we pray for those whom we now name. Let us pray for those who have died. Remembering especially this week, Helen McMahon, New Jersey Army National Guardsman Captain Douglas Lynn Hickok, Army Sergeant First Class John David Randolph Hilty, Army Specialist Clay Welch, Two unnamed Air Force Academy cadets who lost their lives this week. And all those who have died, whose names may be known only to God. For all who mourn, especially at this time in which they cannot gather for a funeral, they cannot bury their beloved dead. We pray for strength and comfort for all who grieve. And finally, let us give thanks for all the blessings of this life. For the beauty of this day, for the ability to be church together to be connected with one another. For the gift of this most holy week and the reminder that the suffering we experience now is not the end of the story. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live each day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful God bless us and keep us. Amen. This concludes our Palm Sunday service of morning prayer and the liturgy of the palms. I am very grateful that you have chosen to worship with me in this way today. If you have not yet seen the schedule of Holy Week offerings that was published yesterday, I encourage you to look at yesterday's daily message. It also will be posted on the, the St. Dunstan's website and on this Facebook page. There will be offerings every day in Holy Week. They may not always be services here from the church, but we have the opportunity to come together to hear and reflect and pray with the story of Jesus's last earthly days. And I commend this Holy Week to you 
as a special time set apart. Again, a, a Holy Week unlike any other you have probably experienced, certainly unlike any that I have experienced before. I look forward to the days ahead with you and I encourage you please to reach out if you need to talk, if you need to pray, if you need to be heard, I am here. Please do not suffer alone or in silence. My brothers and sisters, God bless you.